So I will be the first to admit that this isn't exactly how I expected this video to turn out. Today I decided to take out my old Trek Marlin 5. It was actually the very first mountain bike that I purchased when thinking about getting into the sport and it's treated me really well. It has been in storage for several months now. It's been all, all taken apart and I was really surprised at how well it went back together and actually rode and shifted flawlessly. So that is a huge thumbs up for the integrity of Trek Marlin series bikes. But today's discussion is going to be regarding that lower end entry level hardtail that Trek offers. It's the Marlin series. We're going to see if it's worth the money and how you could actually utilize that bike to get started in this sport. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about the Trek Marlin series and see if it's worth the money and if it'll help out a beginner on the trail whenever you're just starting out. This is the main reason why I wanted to do Rattlesnake Rage over to So if you are new to this channel, it's kind of evolving into a different style that most mountain bike vl uh, vloggers do or mountain bike riders. I do love doing the ride videos and that is fun for me, but everybody could do a ride video. Not a lot of people could do the vlog. That's kind of how I started on YouTube. Way before I was mountain biking, I was doing <laughs> really nerdy stuff on YouTube but I, I always had a background of action sports and stuff, so why not just throw them together and, and try to, to mash the worlds. There are three to, three to four different types of mountain bikes, kind of, but there's also, there's so many different bikes that you can't really say that there's only uh, four or three, but let's break them down so you understand what, what I'm talking about in relation to this video. First one, cross country. Second one, trail. And the third one is downhill. And they're all different styles of bikes. The downhill bike being meant for downhill. So it doesn't really want to climb that well. It's going to go downhill really well, but it doesn't have geometry for much else. The trail bike has uh, the geometry and equipment for pretty much all trails. You could ride downhill on it, you could go uphill on it, and so on and so forth. And the, the cross-country bike is meant for racing. It's usually a hardtail and doesn't have much suspension. Oh man, I'm talking about so much here. Let's talk about five things that this uh, Trek Marlin is good at, and then we'll talk about some things that it's bad at. It's not gonna be five, maybe we'll do five and five, that might be the, the style of this video series. Um, number one, I'm just thinking of these off the top of my head, is uh, stance. Stance for the, the Marlin series bikes is really good. If you're a, a moderately to, to large sized human being, I would say if you're below five, probably five seven, then the 29er, which is the size of wheel, is not going to be great for you. It's just gonna feel a little bit weird because you'll be so high off the ground. But for anyone who is like an average height to above average, it's going to feel really good. Uh, the second thing, let's see, uh, speed. You get a lot of speed with the 29er. They feel really good, especially after riding like a 27.5. But if you're a beginner and you're average to above average height, then the 29 size tires are going to be really confident inspiring because you could roll over stuff and it's just um, it makes you feel like you're capable number three the component tree on the bike itself straight out of the box or the shop feels really good it's all lower end shimano stuff i think it's got tourney uh component tree on it but it feels really good. Um, like I said, I had the bike dismantled for months. It was in all different pieces, all over the place, and I found all the pieces. They might not have all been the same from the same bike, I don't know, 
but it went all back together and and it worked like it worked like flawlessly i was completely surprised at how well it worked so if you're worried about the component tree on like these trek marlin bikes i would say that they're the best for what you're getting because the marlin 5 is around 550 dollars you'll probably find it cheaper at local bike shops and if you try to buy anything else in that that price category like a big box store like dick's it's not going to work the same, I can promise you that because I have experience with that and the shifting on my GT Ricochet Plus which was assembled at a Dick Sporting Goods was horrible out of, out of the store. I had to adjust it a ton of times before it shifted well and comparing that to the Trek Marlin, it, it doesn't even compare in riding. Number four uh, is going to be comfort. Whenever you ride this bike, it's a trek. You could feel that there's just something different about it and it feels good. Like it feels so balanced and properly designed that it's hard to, it's hard to even describe, but I've ridden four different bikes in the time that I've gotten the Trek Marlin 5. And out of those four bikes, this one still feels the best, um, which is pretty sad, but it made me realize that I shouldn't be purchasing these lower level bikes. I know, joke's on me. Um, I shouldn't be doing that. I should just save money and get a better bike, but it's hard to do that whenever you have other responsibilities, but whatever. Um, I'm going to be getting a better bike. And anybody who's watching this or any of my previous videos and is just like, oh, why are you riding like this crummy bike? It's because some people can't just go out and drop four or five grand on a bike. That's why I'm talking about a $500 Trek Marlin bike here. I'll still say that it's better than a lot of the bikes that I've ridden. Okay, so yeah, number four is like the fit and finish of it. Just feels so good and comfortable, better than any of the bikes that I have. And the fifth reason it's trek so i'm let me let me check over here to make sure but i'm pretty sure they'll replace your frame no questions asked i'm gonna look at the the website right now so yeah they will replace your bike with no questions asked so long as you purchase the bike from a uh, dealer and you register that bike on their website and it's called uh it's called Trek Care. So those are five reasons why I think the Trek Marlin is a good bike to have as your first bike. Now let's get into five reasons or just like some reasons why I don't think it's a great bike for the long term. I really didn't expect what happened whenever I went out and rode it on the trail to happen. Here goes my derailleur. Jesus Christ. That's a bummer. It just, uh, it didn't hold up to the abuse that I was giving it. And I, it wasn't even outside the realm of ordinary. I just was hitting some drops and getting a little bit, a little bit squirrely on the bike itself and it just did not hold up to that, like, did not. Uh, the reason being is the back wheel, since it's a 29er and it's not like a great wheel set, it's really flexible and the derailleur just exploded into that thing and it was just not a good, a good time. Um, and I literally, you could see in the, vid the footage that I only came off of the lip just a little bit sideways and on mostly any other bike you would have been able to ride out of it because you know you just hit the you hit the transition and 
a little bit sideways and fishtail and keep going, but with this bike, it just did not. So the first, uh, first reason is gonna be the fact that you can't get too rowdy on this bike. It's a cross-country bike and it's not gonna hold up to huge drops or anything. I definitely would not recommend utilizing this at a trail that was like downhill or even in the mountains, it would be, it'd be pretty risky. You would have to ride it very gingerly and I have ridden it in the mountains before, like actual mountains up in North Carolina and it worked but it was whenever I first started and wasn't very confident in riding the bike. The bike was more or less riding me and just taking me along with the ride. So yeah, it, it would be, I wouldn't consider riding it on a trail that was downhill, not like labeled a downhill trail, but like if it's like a proper mountain, you would have to ride it very carefully and make sure that you weren't taking it outside of its boundaries because it will fail on you. It just, it couldn't hold up to just a few, a few small drops. Like, um, I did this line about three or four times and I don't know if it was just the progression of me doing it multiple times, but on the very last try, it just, the tire felt like it folded and the derailleur just blew it got caught in the spokes and just pretty much ruined, obviously ruined the derailleur and the hanger, and it also blew out some spokes, so <laughs> expect that. That's, it did not, my typical riding is exactly the same on like my hardtail, and it holds up to that abuse every day that I ride it, so look, just make sure that you're not riding this bike like you would a trail bike. You, if you don't understand that, then I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to explain it to you better. If this is your first bike, if the Trek Marlin is your first bike, just stick to staying two wheels planted on the ground because that's going to offer you the best results and that's the best way you could ride this bike. It is a cross country bike, so it's not set up per se to do a bunch of advanced technical jumps and hops, but that doesn't mean that you can't do that on this bike. And the fact that within like five to 10 minutes it failed on me doing those kind of is sad, but I understand why it happened because this bike is not set up. Uh, it's not really meant for it. You can upgrade it and make it capable of doing these things, but out of the box, I would say keep it two wheels planted, ride your cross country and maybe get a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit ballsy and try some different features, but try not, if you're doing features and you're a beginner, try not to leave the ground because if you're a beginner, then you don't know the little intricacies of your, your lips and landing properly because I landed just a little bit out of line with where I was comfortable and the wheel just tacoed, well, it pringled. So yeah, not gonna hold up to the abuse that you would get with a trail bike that is rated for more aggressive riding. That's one of the most negative things I could say about the bike. I don't know if there's anything else that I could say because everything else is really good. It's just not going to hold up great against your, your really aggressive riding unless you're staying planted, it's like a flat trail, and you don't have anything to encounter that's too uh, too progressive, really. It doesn't like jumps, and I don't really say, I don't really think that you should ride a 29er that is cross-country oriented. You shouldn't ride one on, on jumps anyways, because the geometry just doesn't look right for it, and you could tell whenever you're starting to apex on, on like a, on a jump, you could just tell that it's not meant to be in the air at all. But though that's the main reason why I wouldn't suggest this bike. If you're looking to get aggressive on one, I don't think it's for you. It it probably won't hold up to what you're going to do to the bike itself and you you might break it. So yeah, I wasn't expecting this. Um and that's pretty much it. 
I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you're new here, please subscribe and like the video if it helped you out. Get out there and create your own adventure however you can today. I'll see you on the next one.